Reid Hoffman. Good afternoon. Big breaking news. Bob Iger. Do you know who that is? Uh, absolutely. Bob and I have been friends for decades. Okay, so Bob Iger has extended his stay, it's a funny way of putting it, as CEO <laughs> of Disney through 2026. What do you make of that? So Bob is, I think, one of the great CEOs of our time. I think he cares a lot about Disney. He's been a great steward. I think he's... Uh, it does, the news doesn't surprise me. I didn't have any. I, I learned about it here. I didn't. I didn't actually uh, know in advance. But uh, I think it's part of what you want CEOs to be doing, which is acting like owners and feeling that the the important thing is the legacy of the company that they hand on to their successors, to employees, to society. And I think Bob is that guy. Excellent. Shall we talk about artificial intelligence? Certainly. You know, let's start on this single idea. AI or the development of as a meritocracy. Yeah. I know that we've discussed the, the, the principle before, but I, why is AI a meritocracy? So there's a lot of different ways of looking at meritocracy, and I actually like the world, even though the word has gotten under some disfavor over time. I think of AI as amplification intelligence, not artificial intelligence, as, as an amplifier of human abilities. So you know, I wrote this book, the first book on AI, co-written with AI earlier yes. this year, impromptu. And part of it was to say, the way we look at this is not as AI versus people, AI versus humankind, but AI with humankind. And as such, you say, well, now, for example, I'm not, I'm not a very good poet. I can write sonnets. I could write you a sonnet for your birthday. That's, that's something I could do. Um, I think what we're going to have is every human being is going to have a personal intelligence assistant that will help them in anything from work tasks, but also like, oh, I had this difficult conversation with a friend. I'm trying to figure it out. Talk to me about it. And so someone to talk to you about it with it. And I think that's the meritocracy of enabling humanity to essentially anyone who has access to a smart device, a smartphone, something else. That's the broad principle. Yes. Then there's your personal relationship with AI. There is Reid Hoffman, the investor, yeah. Reid Hoffman, the co-founder, yeah. and Reid Hoffman, the academic, for want yes. of a better expression. Which one is winning at the moment? <laughs> uh, well, I hope they win together. I mean, this is one of the things I... Which one are you most focused on being at the moment? Uh, well, so these days, it's always humanity first. Right. So uh, but by the way, sometimes people kind of think, oh, if you're doing an investment that's a for profit company, it can't be for humanity. I think obviously it can be my own company. LinkedIn was, I think, an example of that. Airbnb is an example of that. I think there's a lot of places where these tech companies amplify humanity in really good ways. The same thing with inflection. So I think the okay. same way with these AI companies, which is I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think it would make individual people and societies better. I had Mustafa Suleiman on Bloomberg Technology with me the other day, your, your co-founder and, and partner to admit to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. He described having H100s, NVIDIA GPUs, in a way that made it seem like a badge of honor. <laughs> Why is having uh, a cluster of, of H100s for our global audience, <laughs> that is NVIDIA's most powerful AI-focused GPU graphics processing unit, a badge of honor. So what it really is is a badge of a declaration of possibility and potential because with this huge cluster H100, you can train amazing AIs. That that Pi, Inflection's personal intelligence system, isn't just going to be high IQ, but also high EQ. Like, how okay. can it, how can it, like when you say, oh, my friend's, um, a treasured dog just died. What should I do? It's like, oh, that must be really hard for your friend and really hard for you. How, what's, you know your friend. What's a good way of being there for your friend? And being that, not just like, oh, well, normally you would send a note and maybe in the note you would express your condolences. It's like, no, that's not an EQ way of expressing yes. it. And so what it is is saying, we have the computational capabilities to make amazing agents. Okay. One of which is already live. You can go to heypie.com and you can see it. You have relationships with many members of the AI ecosystem, and I want to understand mm. how that works. You were on the board of OpenAI. Mm. You are no longer. Mm. You, you took a decision to step down. Mm. Explain that first. So OpenAI, great organization, one of the leading things that has made AI work. I literally was spent two hours working with Sam Altman yesterday, still continue to help. Um, part of the challenge, as I put on a blog post, 
is that I was getting more and more requests from all of my portfolio companies to get privileged access to OpenAI. And part of when you're on a 5.1c3, I literally could say, I cannot help you at all. There's the front door to OpenAI. I can't talk to anybody about it because it would be a, uh, a malfeasance on my 501c3 board of directors, you know, fiduciary responsibilities. Yes. Literally, the day after I stepped off the board, I sat down with Sam and said, here's three companies that I think would be really good for OpenAI and for the, and for the company if you gave them privileged access to the APIs and all the rest. And so you, it, it's important not just to have integrity, but to, but to show in all quarters that you're acting with integrity. Okay, so then we talk about Inflection AI, just a monster first round that yeah. they raised. They coexist. How does that work in your shoes? So for uh, OpenAI, 51C3, beneficial AI for humanity. Inflection, public benefit corporation, right? So it's, it's trying to make value out of its equity, trying to make a business, um, and is not focused on AGI, artificial general intelligence, but like a personal intelligence for every human being. Yes. So even though you get ChatGPT, where you say, well, okay, there's a chatbot, there's lots of chatbots. Microsoft, which has a relationship with OpenAI and Inflection, has been chat, has a chatbot. There's going to be dozens of chatbots that will fill different roles in people's lives. And so, um, you know, I, what I think ChatGPT will be was kind of the equivalent of instant Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. What I think Pi will be is kind of your personal buddy. Um, what I think Bing Chat will be was, is, is an amplification of Bing. And so, on. Yeah, and so on. Vinod Khosla, another well-known venture capitalist who you may be familiar with, said to me a few weeks ago that 90% of all of these AI-focused startups, AI-native startups, will not survive. Mm. Do you agree with his, his stance on that? Well, so that's almost to some degree like an average technology you know, life and death rate. With the one out of 10 succeed is kind of classic for tech companies. So as an application of a principle from the history it might be. But since we're in such a, uh, an AI transformational wave, the way I describe this is we're in the, the, the steam engine of the mind, the, the cognitive industrial revolution. Yes. My guess is that might be many more surviving just because it's such a huge impact on every company, every individual, and every professional. And so I would hazard higher percentage, but you know, who knows? I look at Greylock's portfolio that is uh, what some companies you may consider mm. AI native, mm. some AI adjacent, mm. perhaps. Uh, do you worry or to what extent do you worry that some of them are kind of doing the same thing as each other and, and how differentiated are those in your portfolio? So you always have a worry that two companies will track and competing on the exact same thing. And then you have to navigate that if it happens. Cause Technology is always looking for what's the right way to create an amazing, you know, a product, service, an amazing business, a transformation of an industry. But on the other hand, more often than not, at the beginning stages, you think they're going to be competitive, like chatbot and chatbot, chatbots competing. But this chatbot's going to be end up being something that's really great for like students, and this one's going to end up being really great for you know large company workers, and and they're going to have different functions. And this one's going to be you know everyone's personal assistant, you know. So I tend to think that they you we over worry about them competing, and when the surface area is 10% competing, 90% different, that's different. I want you to think as Reid Hoffman, the venture capitalist. Mm. If, if you'll allow me to go down that route. LinkedIn was acquired. Uh, mm. Every Silicon Valley founder's dream is the mega IPO. But I do wonder if with so many AI startups being founded, mm. how much consolidation we might see mm. and, and M&A. Oh, you know. well, you're certainly going to see a bunch of M&A because every company, uh, certainly every tech company and probably many other companies as well, are going to need to have an AI strategy. Right, and the question is, what's your AI strategy? How are you doing it? Now, some of them may work with a company like Microsoft or, or OpenAI or Inflection or other and make that work. Others may, um, you know, home grow on their own. Others may buy. You're going to see a lot of M&A. There's no question. You know, over the next two to three years, there'll be a whole bunch of M&A activity. There are many names in this space. One of those names is Elon Musk, and I don't know if you saw, but he on X.AI. Mm -hmm 
publish some information about what they're up to and who they are as a team. What do you make of all of that? So Elon is one of the great entrepreneurs of our times. Um, I think, you know, OpenAI owes its foundational existence to his work. So I think it's, you know, he was a, a massive contributor. I think Sam was the was one of the drivers, but Elon was there shaping it, helping it. So I think it's great. Um, I think that uh, he cares deeply about humanity, which I think is also great news. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of look a little bit at Sky and sit signing a six-month pause letter while you're trying to accelerate your own effort and things like that. But I think, he's, he's, I think he is a great entrepreneur to have amongst the entrepreneurs doing these things. I tweeted that XAI had published this list of people. What surprised me, so many people responded straight away saying, every single one of the people on that list is a man. There are no women mm. on that list. And they, they were really concerned by that mm. in the context mm. of developing large language models. What's yeah. your, your thought on that? So, I mean, these things are gonna have this kind of transformative impact. It's very important that they are kind of inclusive of, of different voices and considerations. And so every effort that I'm part of, we make a real effort, not just on gender, which is of course an important thing, yes. but also on race, on geographic regions, all of that kind of diversity inclusion actually matters because these things are going to have such an impact on humanity. If you don't do that, you may do something bad. The United States has a lot going on in the theater of AI. Mm. But the question increasingly asked is, what do we know about China's progress in, mm. in the field of AI? What is your assessment of where they are technologically? Or can you, is there a way of knowing? Uh, there's no way of fully knowing um, because one of the benefits and challenges we have of being part of this great Western system as we have a free press and you know, lots of reporting all the rest that's I think one of the things that's great about our society and that's more challenged within China so you don't have as much visibility now that being said they have amazing technologists they have amazing technical companies they are uh, very dedicated to building technology for the future and so I think they will have a number of great AI efforts their AI efforts are obviously somewhat challenged by the fact that large language models are difficult to control. And so can you, get a, can you make sure a very scale large language model can both generate all of this interesting material and also not say, well, here is 10 funny jokes about Xi Jinping, or here's the argument about why the Chinese Communist Party is actually not a democracy that you had a vote for once. And the, the, the Chinese government system doesn't want that in any of its internet or digital things, so that's more challenging. And the data that yes. they're training the models on, why is that an important point of differentiation? The, the, not just the volume of data, but what is in the data? Well, data is a complicated story when it comes to AI. So when you're doing these large language models, what you really need is volume of data versus the, the, the specific like, oh, do you have this really high quality data? Now, high quality data can be useful, useful for medical applications, yes. useful for coding, et cetera. Um, and by the way, the Chinese general lack of privacy controls on data could make some of their efforts much stronger. The challenge, of course, when you do that with large language model approaches is those large language model approaches don't necessarily go, here's how I can obey CCP regulations. Yes. Right, and that's going to be one of the challenges they're going to have. Uh, we could talk for the rest of the week about AI. For but, sure. But we won't. Threads. Yes. So, look, I think Facebook has done a, Meta, has done a great product launch. It's a high-quality product. I think it's because of turbulence around social media, they have a natural launch for that. Um, I think, by the way, Instagram has done things like this before. Like, they launched Stories, and their Stories launch was very successful and was part of, became part of the Instagram ecosystem. So um, we'll see how it stays, but its launch was amazing. Mark Zuckerberg himself has been really active and engaged on the, in the early days of the platform with its users. I, I just wondered if you could reflect on what you see in Mark now versus when all those years ago when Facebook started. Well, uh, one of Mark's strengths, which is a strength of great entrepreneurs, is he's an infinite learner. So he's been learning since then. Like, what's the way that you... What are the things that you pay attention to? How do you launch good products? Like this is a enormously successful product launch yeah. from an established company. Established companies don't that often have new successful product launches. And this is one of them. And so that's, I think, 
a testimony to what he's learned over the years. Have you had a chance to discuss Threads with him? I have not. I hope to. What is it that you think Threads has an advantage over other similar social media platforms, and what is its disadvantage? So I think its advantage is that it can do a, it can do, it can try to do a new launch without some of the baggage that that other social media like we all learn as we go like there's things like i would have launched linkedin with the whole influencers network if i'd had the idea at the beginning right it's a it's a vital part of keeping this kind of it's about business and vision and leadership on linkedin um undoubtedly they have similar kind of whatever their plans are for threads i think it's applying those from a from a new sh from a from a, a launch like part of it is as immediately benefiting from your Instagram account, as you knew that when you launched it, you didn't have a cold start problem. That was one of the things that that is a classic network building that they've navigated around, I think, fairly elegantly. Um, but you know, I uh, I would anticipate that they have a whole bunch of plans that we have yet to see. And on the disadvantage that it may have over, I, I guess, for itself against other platforms. So disadvantage, well, typically it's when you try to start from fresh. You're starting cold start network problem. They've solved that one. Um, look, I I personally hope that they are doing more on the try to keep it to a more positive communications culture versus which I think Instagram is generally more than you know kind of Facebook itself. Uh, so I hope for that, but that would be a that's a question. Final thing is, can Threads and Twitter both exist together? Uh, for sure, they can. Um, but they may end up competing too, but that still means they could exist together. Reed Hoffman, it's so nice to be here in person chatting yes, all things technology. Yes. Thank you for your time. A pleasure.